Hello everybody, this is Les Taylor of lestaylorphoto.com and today I'm doing the first of a kind of continuing video series, I guess you could say, um, called Post-Processing Rundowns, PPR, I guess if you're a, uh, an acronym person. But uh, anyway, basically my goal in these videos is rather than taking you from start to finish through every single step in the processing uh, method that I use, Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of take you through some of the major parts that I did and not explain everything in detail, just kind of give you a basic idea through some of the major steps that I took um, in processing the image with the final image in mind. And so with that said, let's go ahead and get started with this image. I took this in Gunma Prefecture uh, just about a week and a half ago, actually, so um, very new image for me. Um, and, you know, this was taken, obviously, in the fall. And, you know, let me say something really quick before I actually get into some of the processing aspects of this image. The human eye is an amazing thing, right? It can see so much color, so much light. And not only can it see more and take in more just physically than your camera can, but also it's connected to your mind. And so, you know, whenever you see an, a scene like this, you're not just seeing it physically, you're interpreting it as a person. You're looking at this image, you're seeing this scene, and you're looking at it as a person. So when you look back on it in your memory, right, when you think about it and remember the scene, you view it differently than just the way you physically saw it. Because you're not just, as a human being, you're not just taking in data like your camera is. You're actually processing a scene as a human being. And so what I try to do in my images is to really share that feeling that I had when I was there, not just to share the literal data, the actual, just technically the way it looked or whatever. Because um, the reality is, first of all, you know, the camera can't pick it up like your eye can anyway, but I also want to share kind of the, the feeling of being in the spot. And so that's how I uh, kind of approach my processing workflow. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Now, this is the before image. This is straight out of the camera, just a straight raw file. As you can see, the color is kind of dull, really not a whole lot going on in the image. This is how it's going to look out out of Lightroom. Now, this is not the finished image. This is just how it looks when I'm done in the Lightroom process. So let's go ahead and go through some of the modules here. In the basic module, I'm just going to up the contrast and the clarity. That's especially going to help me with this road. I really want to pull out a little bit of texture in the road there, get some more detail in it. And then color-wise in this module, the main thing I'm going to do is uh, probably pull the white balance a little bit towards uh, the yellow because it's autumn, so I want to give a little bit more of a, a warmer feel. And then the vibrance up to you know make the colors pop a little bit more. Okay, Probably the biggest thing I'm going to do in Lightroom then is I'm going to uh, adjust the coloring and the, uh, adjust things in the color module. This basically kind of across the spectrum allows me to control each color more individually on an individual basis the way that color needs to be. Now this might surprise you, but I actually lowered the blues in this. The reason is that I don't want the sky to distract from the rest of the image, and the rest of the image is really the main part. The sky is not the main part of this image, right? And so I actually lowered the saturation a little bit. Then I'm going to move the yellows a little bit more towards the orange area, the oranges a little bit more towards the red. I'm going to increase the saturation on both of those. And the reds, I'm going to leave the hue the same, but I'm going to increase the saturation a bit. And that's going to just give a little bit more autumn feel. But again, this is just the kind of start to the image. Split toning, I'm basically just going to try to even the image out a little bit more. Um, just kind of make make it look a little bit more even across the board with those the, the split toning. Of course, you can fool around with this and do a lot of different things with it. And then uh, detail, I'll probably sharpen a little bit, make, make some of the basic lens corrections, and that'll pretty much be it for this image. And so going back to the before, that's the before, straight out of the camera, and then this is out of Lightroom. We're not done yet, though. I'm going to go on over to Photoshop, and you'll see what it looks like when I'm totally done with the image. This is how it looks like um, completely finished with the image. And let's look back here again. Flipping over between the two, you can see a major difference between these two images in a lot of ways. And I'll go through and show you exactly what I did at uh, each part. Okay, now this is without any of the other real adjustments. The main adjustments that I did just to the image itself, one is uh, just to the background image, right? One is I did a little bit more adjusting in, uh, to the colors. So in the hue saturation um, module here in Photoshop, you can kind of do the same thing that I did over in Lightroom in the coloring module. Okay, so that'll, uh, 
adjust those colors a little bit more in Photoshop. Probably the biggest thing I really did though is I went into what's called Topaz Adjust 5 and that's going to give me a lot more detail, a lot more strength in the texture here in this road which I really want to use in this image because the road is such a big part of the image. Um, and it's also going to give a little more vibrance to the colors and things like that. Okay. Then I'm going to add, using down here, if you click on this little uh, circle, this little half dark, half light circle, it's going to give you the option to create a new fill or adjustment layer. And what this is going to do is allow you to make all these changes, but on a layer instead of just to the image itself. So you can do this to hue saturation, you can do the photo filter, you can do tons of different things in this. And it's great to just kind of play around. That's probably one of the best ways to learn um, how to do it. But you add one of these and it adds it as a layer. So instead of just adding it to the image where you can't change it again later, you can add it as a layer. It makes the same kind of change as it would if you did it directly to the image, but you can adjust it. You have a lot more flexibility with it, just put it that way. So what I did is I changed the levels a little bit, not a huge change, but what you do is instead of, you know, for me, instead of making major changes all at once, I make small changes that build up to what I want the image to be. So the levels give me a little bit more lighting control. Color balance, as the name, name implies, balances the color more. And now what you, you'll notice, especially if you look down here at the road, if I turn off the color balance, this road is still very warm. Well, I don't really want the road to be warm. Just in, in my personal opinion, I don't really like it being warm all the way across the image. I like the road to look, for lack of a better word, the color of a road, I guess. And so this color balance kind of pulls that road a little bit back from the rest of the image. Brightness contrast, kind of, I don't know, straightforward. It affects the brightness and contrast. And this gradient fill, this is a great tool. This gradient fill basically allows me, it's kind of like adding a filter as if I had a filter on the camera, um, but I didn't actually, so I can kind of add that filter in post-processing. But the amazing part about it is I can adjust this filter um, using this group mask on just this one thing. I can take that filter and remove it from different parts and still keep the nice gradient at other parts. So that's what I did here actually. I liked the way that it was affecting the upper part of the image but I didn't like the way it was affecting the road, so I masked out how it affected the bottom part and just kept it mostly in the upper area, and uh, that kind of helped the lighting and the colors a little bit more the way I wanted to. And so you put all that together, and that's where you get uh, this final image. So let's go back to Photoshop and let's look at the original, or in Lightroom rather, let's look at the original image. That's the original image straight out of the camera. This is the final image, totally edited. So again, the original in Lightroom there, and the final image. And I really like the way this looks. I think this really shows what I experienced being there anyway. And uh, it's not too over the top. It's not too crazy for me. Um, a lot of nice detail on the road. You see those leaves, the colors, everything. And uh, that, again, looks good to me. So that is the end of this uh, rundown. I hope it's been useful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. This has been Les Taylor of lestaylorphoto.com. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.